Hey, Ma, we have to have words. I think Mom doesn't want me to make the gravy like her. Only you. Sabotage? It's not sabotage. Hello, friends. It is Monday, and I'm here at the airport starting to pick up our holiday guests. Super excited. Only Derek and I know who's showing up today. Like, I couldn't sleep last night. Where's my tissues? Shaylee has not seen him. He's even in the backyard, but she is playing the VR thing, whatever that thing is, Oculus. She has no clue. So, but I think he's going with Derek right now to register um, his old car. He wants stuffed shells for dinner. So I'm gonna start on my gravy, my Italian sauce. I always have these staples to make stuffed shells, lasagna, lazy man lasagna in the home. These are like my go-to staples that I have in the refrigerator and on my shelves to shop with. So if I do it with a jar, here are some of the things that I use. I have the jar sauce, I have the noodles, whatever you wanna make, if it's manicotti, if it's stuffed shells lasagna, or rigatoni to have like lazy man lasagna. And I always have mozzarella cheese. I always try to keep a container of ricotta cheese. And I always have my other specialty cheeses on hand to make this. Now we're gonna make it with the gravy, and the house is gonna smell so good. His tummy is gonna be nice and full. Mm. Garlic and a big fat onion. I think I have some onion in the refrigerator that I could use up too. Now I can start cooking because you know I'm going to get something on me. I thawed out some pork some pork chops. This is going to start in the pan with some olive oil and with the onions first. And then we're gonna get the onions all caramelized and then we can hit it with the sauce. But first I need my pork and my onions and my olive oil in that pot. All right, I'm looking for my meatballs. Uh, I made meatballs a little while ago, uh, raw, froze them, so I can now throw them into my gravy with the sausage. I'm not sure which freezer it's in. It's not in the refrigerator freezer in the food storage room. They're not in the big freezer. Okay, so do you remember this? Yeah. <laughs> we did it. We got another freezer. There is a story to this. I've been wanting this freezer for a long time and you think I'd be pretty excited about it, but there's a story and I will share it with you. Yes, I ended up getting the freezer I wanted. If you guys all know, you know. This is the freezer from Costco, the Hamilton Beach. Want another freezer? Derek's like, where are we gonna put it? I'm like, there's room. See, there's room. When there's a will, there's a way. But this is not how I wanted to get it, you guys. I don't know what happened. It was like after our beef arrived, like our beef haul arrived, soon after that freezer just like stopped. It wasn't freezing anything and I'm like, well, did I keep the doors open too long? Did it hit defrost mode? I don't know. Caught everything just in time. Derek, he ran to Costco, got another freezer, and so we have this. So now this is storing all of our cow, all of our beef. And so I had to quickly adjust our freezers. I just got the this refrigerator freezer all organized and the big one organized. It was beautiful. And then that situation happened, which was weird because it wasn't overcrowded. It wasn't blocking anything to make it thaw. So I don't know, I don't know. But it's working now. We kept a couple of things in the freezer to see if it would like thaw. It's working now. So I put like all the butter back into that freezer. Now I'm gonna move and shift some things around. I'll do that on another video. So now I'm on the hunt for my meatballs and my last guess is in this freezer here in my pantry. I have some pork in here. I just brought the pork into the other freezer. I had to distribute things between my family's freezers as well. All right, here's the meatballs. I know I have more than this as well. 
Oh my gosh. Hey friends. All right. I've got the one bag. I know there's another one. It's not in here. Oh my gosh. This is a tight squeeze. Oh my gosh. I'm old. Ugh. I've been asking Mr. Toodles to switch this door. I'm still on a meatball hunt. But here's some. But I know I have another bag. What? What did you say? Recipes from our family. Sunday gravy or sauce. Oh, <gasps> see? Look what Mr. Toodles noticed. Yep. It's all how you There you it. go. Yep. And gravy is with meats. It starts with meats first. Yeah, it starts with meats. Exactly. All right, those are the newer cans that we just got, so I'm not going to use those. You could tell I still need to, like, clean up this a little bit. So I need to use these cans first of the tomatoes. So I need three, these three, and then I need those are peeled tomatoes. I don't want those um, peeled. Those are all peeled. So I will grab one of these. Mm, it's getting all caramelized. So now I'm going to add the sauce. Is that all the meatballs we got? Yep. I thought we had another bag, but then I remembered, remember when I made the kids this pasta and meatballs? Yeah. Yeah, like before our trip, it just dawned on me. I went hunting. I went hunting even in the family freezers thinking maybe I moved the bag somewhere. There's no more meatballs. So I'm not gonna make any today. I won't eat any. No, you should keep, look at that. There's still plenty in there. How many meatballs yeah, is that? Boston and Jonah go through the line, they're gone. Same with Shaley. They love the meatballs. It's okay. You've got the sausage. Just double up on the there's sausage. There's like probably 30 meatballs there. And then, there, yeah, and then there's the sausage. We'll be all the fine. Sausage. I'll I'll eat the sausage. Oh, this is beautifully caramelized. Look at that. Mm -mm. All right, so now we're going to hit it with the sauce. First, I'm going to scrape all those good bits at the bottom. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Derek, how was it seeing your boy? It's good. It was really good. Oh my gosh. Derek's like, I made him pull up his shirt so I could see his love handles. I told him, show me your love handles. He's like, what love handles? Look up his shirt. There's no love handles. He's still ripped. He's got nothing down there. He's all, no fat. We thought maybe he'd be a little chunky. Oh, the lighting is horrible. With him being, you know, where he's stationed, he's he's doing jobs, he's traveling. And we thought he was getting chunky with the, the way he was eating. Because he just looked that way on FaceTime. Like, but in his face, he's chunky. So we thought, oh, I bet he's got love handles. Now they do physical like exams on the guys, like they have to go and get weighed, get fat tested. But with Jonah, now what was it? Oh, because he, the way that he ran, like you have to do a run test no, or something, he, right? No, he got over a certain score so he didn't have to go get his BMI. Oh yeah, so he performs so well, the kid is so athletic that when it comes to running, sprinting, like any exertion, any like um, physical thing, he passes it. So he didn't have to go get like the fat test or whatever. And we're like, he looks chunky, but it's all in his face. So he's still ripped. You pulled yep, up his he, shirt and you looked. I did. And my kid, oh, okay, did you ask him? No, I said, show me your love handles. And he's like, what love handles? Lifted oh. up his shirt. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't have any. I, we thought for sure. We're like, oh, I bet he's chunking out. Oh, he's but nope. still pretty ripped, man. Yeah. He's a big boy. He's he, bulked up quite a bit. Yeah, he's a big boy. So I was standing outside the car waiting for him. And I was just like so antsy. I was just like standing there outside the car, just <sighs> and I'm seeing like guys in uniform come out, like army uniforms, but they were um National Guard. He wasn't gonna travel in his gear, whatever it's called. I noticed when he came right out of the doors and immediately like I was for clunked. I was like the tears were starting. And so he comes walking over and I'm like, get over here and he just beamed this big smile and we just grabbed onto each other and we hugged and then I started sniffing him. I'm like, Yep, that smells like Jonah and so I was sniffing him and I'm like, I've missed you. And he let me hug him. He held me, which is not Jonah. Um, not Jonah at all. Like physical love touch like no boy, no. no but he he hugged me good it was so good he was just beaming and he's like how's it going and he's just smiling and i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe you're here so it was great it was a good reuniting i want to share with you my holiday grocery hauls from costco and sam's club 
Here is the holiday haul from Costco. Their honey-made graham crackers were on sale, really good deal. And then the gluten-free crispy sea salt baked crackers to go with the charcuterie boards. And then the Columbus reduced sodium Italian dry salami. What's great about this is you can pop, cut this down the middle, pop it the other half in the freezer and have it for later. So we've got, this was on sale, so that was a good deal. So we have salamis for all the gatherings in Christmas and New Year's. Then the Pecorino Romano cheese, yum. And this goes on everything that I make, all my Italian dishes for my gravy. So we have to have this nice and fresh for the holidays. And then the Stevens Milk Chocolate Hot Chocolate. We love this stuff. We go through it fast during the holidays. The Dairy Gold Eggnog, the classic eggnog. It's so good. And then I had to try, and I've seen it there before. I shared it with you uh, on another video. The David's Cookies Cranberry Pistachio Biscuits. I can't wait to try these. So this is my Costco holiday haul. Here is Sam's Club's holiday haul. The Nestle Toll House semi-sweet morsels were on sale. So I grabbed a 72 ounce bag, so four and a half pounds of morsels. The wavy potato chips were on sale. That'll go great with our shrimp dip. Some whole cashews. Then the imported European cheese collection. Love this stuff. Irish cheddar, oh, it's so good. French mental. We end up like not really eating this, you guys. We're not fans of that, but the rest we love. Um, the Fontina cheese and the Dutch Gouda. Oh, yum. The organic coconut crispy rolls are so good. They're so light and airy. Put that on any grazing board, yum. Then more of the whipped topping. Gotta have that. Put it on your hot chocolate, your desserts, your fruits. Then the Martinelli's sparkling cider, yum. I am really excited about this. I thought this would be good to have out on the grazing boards. I'm gonna butcher the first name. <laughs> Matilde Fincenzi, and these are Italian fine pastries. So I can't wait to open this up. And this is my Sam's Club holiday haul. All right, so for this, I have to slowly rinse some water and get all that good stuff, all that sauce out. I just put enough, like maybe a fourth if we can, just clear those sides. Then we're going to just dump it right back into the pot. And then I'm gonna add all the seasonings. If you want a like full video tutorial, there will be one linked in the description. All right, I need that garlic. We're, pretty, we're gonna use pretty much all of this, so a whole bulb of garlic is going into that pot. Then I need my seasonings. Basil, oregano, black pepper. Oh, that's my elbow. Italian seasoning. And I don't measure. I just dump it in and I taste as I go. to simmer for a little while and then probably in about an hour and a half I'll add the sausage and meatballs. Oh and if you make gravy, Sunday gravy, tell me how you do it. What do you put in it? Now I'm just getting the sausage cut to put in the pot. Is that my phone? Yeah. That's my ringer? Yeah. Who's calling me? Oh she was? Oh messenger that's what that noise is. I'm like that's my ringtone? Ooh, messenger back. Talk to my sister. Hi. Hi. Oh, I miss your face. I see it on Snapchat all the time. But yeah. I miss your face. <laughs> I mean, it's been alright. I haven't really done anything. So I, only got, I got here at noon, so I've only been here for a few hours. She gave me a beautiful, beautiful Christmas ornament. Oh. Bonus points for Joan. I mean, I remember you saying that he was coming. I just wasn't sure when. The were the kids surprised? Yeah, we went straight from the airport to the high school. Joan was surprised him. And then it was hilarious because Shaylee was sitting upstairs waiting for her piano lesson to start. She was in the kitchen. 
and Ooh. Shona comes in from down here, up there. Oh my gosh! Hi! Hi. I could not sleep last night. You would think I was waiting for Santa to show up or something. Kelly, stop by today? No, she doesn't know yet, so I don't know. He's gonna call Felix and work something out. Oh my gosh, she'll be tickled. Are you with Callie? No, no, I'm, I'm working. What? Okay, listen, I need you to help me out. We gotta, I need you to bring Callie down so we can surprise her, bro. Okay, I will, bro. You got me, bro? I got you, I got you. All right, but she can't know. Nah, I won't tell her. That's awesome, I'm happy you're home. I'm FaceTiming my sister, and I said, guess what we're having with the dinner, Ashley? And she said, Hawaiian rolls? Yeah. It's not just plain Hawaiian rolls, right, Ashley? No, it is a delicious garlic bread addition with Hawaiian rolls. I cannot not have them. We made them at her house. I shared the recipe with her because we had some left over from my mom when I was at her house. Let me share with you this recipe. You can either place your Hawaiian rolls on a rimmed baking sheet or a deep nine by 13 pan. Then you'll cut a deep X on top of each of the rolls. You'll need two tablespoons of parsley, four cloves of garlic finely chopped, or you can use garlic powder like we did. Use one eighth of a teaspoon, and that will equal about one standard size of a garlic clove. And then melt six tablespoons of butter. And we're just gonna whisk together the melted butter, the parsley, and the garlic. Then pour the herb butter over the rolls. Make sure you get plenty in that X spot. Just top each roll with some butter. Let it drip down the sides. Mm -mm. Have your oven preheated to 400 degrees. And we're gonna bake the rolls until warmed through and golden around the edges, about seven to 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, you guys, you can't eat just one. These are so good. Look how beautiful. Oh, it smells insane. You'll, you'll, you'll never, probably ever go back to a normal okay. maybe garlic roll. This is so good. Time to put the meatballs in. They're partially frozen now. Get in my belly. Okay, Ashley, what seasonings do you put in your gravy? Because I swear, like I say every time, my gravy tastes different every time. And this time, my gravy tastes a little different and I can't pinpoint. Like I put a fourth cup of sugar and then like a third of another fourth cup of sugar. So it's like, I don't know if I need more sugar in it. I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I have a very specific yeah. recipe, and I use it all the time, so it tastes the same every time. This is what mom taught me. For one batch, I use three large cans of crushed tomatoes with puree, one large can of diced tomatoes, mm -hmm. and then three small cans of tomato paste, six ounces each, two boneless pork chops, thin cut, one large yellow onion, and then I do one fourth cup of sugar. It's basil to taste. Romano cheese. Oh, you do put the Romano cheese in. Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. She puts it that in. That makes a world of difference. Does mom? Does in the gravy and it gives that. I don't know, Wait, does mom put that in? Does mom do that? Yeah, mom does that. I didn't know that. I put it in the. Mom is the one. Like I sat down with her. I was like. but she literally puts it in the gravy. Yes. So this is Pecorino um, Romano that Grammy always used. Oh, so how much? that's the good one. Yeah, this is the good stuff. I used to grate this stuff all the time for Grammy. So how much does she put of this in there? See, that's the thing with mine. I know. It, there is no measurement. So I had to play around with it. And it's like, I sound like mom, how she talked to me about it. Cause she's like, it's just, it's just to taste. You gotta I know. play around with it. You gotta do this and you gotta do that. I used to get so frustrated with her. Cause I, this is one thing that she couldn't give me an exact measurement on. And now that I do it, I can't tell other people either. If I find Josh's that the gravy is, is too yeah, thin, I'll add more. 
more. Really? Of this? Sprinkle some more on there. I don't like mine thin and watery. I only do one can of tomato paste. You literally do three? Three small cans of tomato paste, but they're six ounces each. Yeah. It depends on what size you have. I only do one of six ounces. Oh, I do three, but that's with three large cans. Three yeah. 28 ounce cans of tomatoes with puree, one large can of tomato paste, six ounces each. And what herbs do you put in it? Besides the Romano, I sprinkle basil, and that's the taste. Right, careful and then one more cup of sugar. I never, I never waver on the sugar. I always do one fourth cup. So when I make this, I triple the recipe. You don't put Italian seasoning, oregano, or anything in it? Don't. Just basil? Do you want the other pieces? Yeah, because the crushed tomato cans that I get have the puree in it. Yeah, so I, mean, I think it's upstairs. Uh, everybody has Italian seasoning, okay. Yes, and mom always told me that if I couldn't find tom uh, crushed tomatoes with the puree, Italian puree with it, then that's when I would add all Hello. the seasoning. Hello. But since the Ingalls brand of crushed tomatoes oh, always has it, uh -huh. I don't eat it. I just add basil. I yeah, add a lot of basil. Out. How much? I don't know. I just sprinkle it and I mix it and it's just how it looks. <laughs> Because I'm like, because I, I know I'm not using the same tomatoes that we get in Massachusetts. Sometimes I order it, but but I'm just like, what am I doing wrong? Like, it's there, but it's not quite like mom's. It's like, it's like so close every time, but not quite. Well, for one thing, yeah, use three cans, six ounce cans of tomato paste. Then won't tomato paste alter the taste of the everything? Or I don't know. This is just what he told me. I've been working That's with it. thick. That is thick. Look at this right now. It's like thick. I don't know. Maybe it's not thick. I don't know. I haven't done three cans in so long. So yeah, these are six ounces. So you do three. Gosh, I've only been doing one. See, the this is what this is what I've been using, and I have four of those in there. And I sat down with mom and got the recipe, and she never said anything about the cheese going in like that. Really? No, never. Like in the pot, put the cheese, no. Like in my meatballs, yeah, but never in the pot. Well, that's weird. Yeah, why is she telling you one thing? Why is your gravy coming out perfect like hers and mine is sucking? Who, who, who whose fault is that? What are you guys doing to me? Because I have never put cheese in it. And if you're telling me that's all I needed to do to make it exactly, I'm gonna be upset. All right, love it. Have fun tonight. Hold on, where's he going? Bye. I miss you already. Aww. I love you. Hey, Ma, we have to have words. We're going over the recipe, right, on how we make our gravy. We all kind of make it a little different. My brother makes it different. And I, Mom never told me you put the cheese, the Romano, or Pecorino Romano cheese into the sauce. Never got that memo. Never got that memo. I got it for the meatballs, but not in the gravy. And then Ashley says, well, did mom teach you about the can of water? And I said, yeah, you take your 20 ounce cans, you rinse the sides with the water, get all the tomato off, and you put that amount of water that was in that can from rinsing the sides into the pot. What did mom tell you, Ashley? Mom told me, to put three cans, three six ounce cans of tomato paste and with each can fill it up with water and put it in the gravy. I think mom doesn't want me to make the gravy like her, only you. I don't understand why that would be. Sabotage, I smell sabotage. I don't know, I think Ma just might be losing it. I don't, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know, Kimmy. I wish I could tell you. Because my my sauce has no, never Seth makes it either. I because I know Seth makes it, and I don't know if his is as good. I, I think he puts he red wine it. in his now. But here's the thing: like it's always close to Grammys, but it's never there. And if you're telling me this is freaking why, I'm gonna be ticked. 
So I added the cheese in and yes, there's a definite difference. But I only put two cans of the uh, tomato paste in. This is thick, like even with the cheese, it's thick, Ashley. Well, cause you only put a little bit of water. I'm not sure how much it ended up being. Cause they're saying you filled the six ounces. Each six ounce can, after you dump the paste out, you fill it up with water and you put it in the pot. I'm gonna take the 28 ounce can of tomatoes, 28 ounce can of tomatoes, and I'm gonna rinse like she says to do. Da da, yeah, once around, twice around, okay. Shake it up, and I'm pouring it into the tomato paste. And it is, it doesn't quite fill it. Okay. So it's short a little, and I do that for all four cans. All right, so what you need to do, since you only put in two six ounces of tomato paste, you need to put in a third, and then you need to put in two cans of water plus the difference of that can right there. You yeah. put in whatever space is left there of water, and then put in one more full can of water, and then add one more can of uh, tomato paste, six ounces, and then add that water to it. My sister's gravy tastes just like my mom's. Angie, you're in trouble. Mother. This is what happens when you cook by like memory and taste. Yeah. This is what comes of that. Where it's not like written down specific. Because it's all like a little of this, a little of that. I'm gonna I'm gonna correct the water. I'll add another dang tomato paste in and we'll see. She's gonna You're get it. She's gonna <laughs> get it. She's You're gonna kill her. She's gonna, gonna get it. Her. She's ma. I need to speak with your wife. What am I doing? I'm making Christmas cookies. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Is it the same Funny. recipe that you gave us girls? Yeah. The exact same recipe that you've given us girls? Yes. So um, when you gave us the a gravy recipe, did you give Ashley a different version than me? No. No? My gravy recipe? No, it's the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah? <laughs> I, I'm claiming sabotage. You've sabotaged me. No, I did not. Yes, sir. I have my sister on the line with us, Mom. I had nothing to do with this. Listen, Angela, listen. Okay. We're going over the recipe for the gravy, and I was saying, like, my recipe doesn't always turn out like Mom's. Like, there's always something, like, it's there, but it's not there. So what's missing? Well, so Ashley went over exactly how she does it. I'm like, Mom didn't tell me to do that. Mom didn't tell me to do that. So what you didn't tell me was, is that I have to put the Romano cheese in the gravy too, not just the meatballs. I didn't always do that. You didn't always do that? No. Cause what now I'm wondering, why did Grammy make us grind down so much cheese? Now that makes but sense. But we get a lot as kids. All yeah. We do is grind the cheese. Yeah. yeah, but there were times where she didn't put Italian cheese in it. But then how does it constantly taste the same? I don't know. We were going over, you know, the tomatoes. You need to add seasoning if they're not Italian kitchen tomatoes, you know, da 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 da. I was telling her how I take the 28 ounce jars of tomatoes and rinse the inside and put that water yep. in the gravy. Right. Ashley, did you hear that? Right. Yeah, I did. But you've told Ashley that you rinse the you fill up the tomato paste cans. Yes, you do. The, the, <sighs> the tomato cans, the big cans, you just rinse them out, but you don't put a lot of the water in the sauce, just the tomato paste water. You fill the can up to the top. Yes, all we can. <laughs> all, the, you, all the cans of tomato paste, you fill up to the top with water. That's the big cans, you rinse them out, but then there's not, don't put that much water in the, the cans and then that you can throw that in the gravy just to get all the tomato. See, sabotage, Ashley, sabotage. She told you one thing. Backpedaling. Yep, Back. she's backpedaling. Yes, mother, you never told me about the water in the tomato paste jars. Oh, well, you didn't pay attention, I know. No, I asked you, I sat there with a pen 
pen paper and said, Ma, go over it with a fine tooth comb. And I wrote down everything that you said. Ashley does it differently. Oh, well. Like, it's good, but it's not. It's like, there's something missing. There's always something missing. Do you put basil in your sauce? Yeah, and I put Italian seasonings in. You put sugar? I put sugar, a fourth cup. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, and another thing that she didn't tell you. Is that it, you told me, Ma, three large cans of crushed tomato with puree and one large can of diced tomato. Yeah, she's told me that, too. You not do that. She's told me that, too, but if I can't get the diced tomato, I'm like, what's the difference? A tomato is a tomato. Dice versus crushed. Well, the crushed tomato, my crushed tomato has puree in it because I use pastine. So I don't know, Ashley, was there sabotage? You you be the deciding factor. Was there sabotage? <laughs> if you were sabotaged? I don't think she did it intentionally. Not intentionally. I don't want to say it. I was paying attention, ma. <laughs> I know I have ADHD, but when it comes to the gravy and getting it exact, I was fully alert. There was no squirreling. See, it changes. Italian women change how they cook things. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, I never used well, to put yeah, Italian cheese in my sauce. Mom, when them. I ask her for certain like <laughs> measurements, I can't give you measurements. A little bit here, a little bit there, and that used to piss me off. No right wonder, on. no wonder why we're fat. We're constantly tasting everything as we cook. <laughs> but I can't give you an exact amount. You just put a little bit here, you yeah. taste it, and you see how it goes. So I added the cheese and I grated the pecorino romano cheese in, and now it tastes better. Good, I'm glad. Well, it explains why I would get a sore arm for Grammy grating all that cheese. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of cheese for just meatballs. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember all the, the women grating freaking cheese. I don't, I don't know if she did. I know I do, but I don't know if she did. <laughs> <laughs> well, no more grandchildren for you from me, okay? Okay. I'm cutting you off. Okay. Yeah, and I'm done too. Yeah, we're done. We're okay. done. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Kevin will be the first one to give you a great grandchild. <laughs> I'm putting that out in the universe. I'm just saying because I'm terrified. One day, right? One day. It's going to be one of us, and I pray to God it's you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mom, you're off the hook. Okay, okay. I'm glad you saw your well, now. It tasted better. It tasted better, yes. It tasted better once I put the cheese in. All right. Thanks, okay. Mom. <laughs> Why I ought to. Dinner was delicious, and now I'm putting the gravy away. So what I did was I took these quart freezer bags and added three cups of sauce into each. And then in two other quart size bags, I have leftover meatballs and sausage. So I'm going to put all of these into the freezer, and we will have them later. I have a lot more videos where I share some make ahead recipes. You can click on that video here. And I have a video on 40 things that freeze well. I hope you guys are doing good. Hope you had a great Christmas and I'll see you soon.